Good afternoon. You guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, is this thing on? All right, after two hours, my voice does wear out. So uh, I go ahead and mic myself. And uh, the other thing is I record the lecture, so that makes sure that the audio is, is uh, as loud as it possibly can be. Uh, well, welcome back to the fall semester. I actually do see quite a few familiar faces. So some of you must have been in, in my 201 class. Was that last semester or the semester before? The semester before, OK. All right. I got all new jokes now. <laughs> now they're all pretty much the same. Same old dry humor. So uh, some of you that don't know what I'm talking about, we, we actually do jokes every time we get together. OK? And that's how we kick it off. So we'll go ahead and start with a couple. Um, most of these my kids wrote. So um, you have to kind of put it in the context of something between the ages of 6 and 12. Okay? And there's four authors between the ages of 6 and 12. So it's a busy house. So um, it makes them feel better if you laugh, even if it's really not that funny. So number one, why are frogs so happy? Why are frogs so happy? No ideas? Because they eat whatever bugs them. <laughs> All right, number two. What type of clothing uh, do clouds wear? What type of clothing do clouds wear? No idea? Thunderwear. <laughs> That's probably a six year old. That one was really funny, I bet. All right, so my name is Dr. Keller. I'm going to be your professor for the semester. I'm actually pretty excited about this class. Um, it's a lot of fun, in my opinion, because you've had 201 as well as 202. is kind of a culmination because uh, the requirements are, are fairly aggressive. You are to have 201 and 202 complete, and you're to have 205 done. And um, what that does is it gives us a background by which we can actually launch this class right. Um, there's a lot of clinical application within this class, and I would imagine that many of you are going to find that interesting. Uh, some of you may not. And so hopefully the research side of things will actually keep you engaged. Uh, how many of you, as a show of hands, uh, are, are going to be physicians if everything turns out the way it's supposed to be? Okay, have to keep them up. How many of you are going to be nurses? There's no particular order. How about dentists? Dental hygiene? Keep them up. We're trying to see how many of the class we're going to get. Uh, so nursing, physical therapy, dental hygiene, Doctor, researcher, grad school, to the picture. PA, occupational therapy. Okay, what am I missing? What's the big group that I'm missing? I, not call, I called everybody? There's like three hands up right now. <laughs> you guys are tired at 220, huh? Okay. So, judging by the hands that went up, Many of you are pre-professionals in a medically related field. And so hopefully you'll find this class, see now it's doing it again after you leave, right? Uh, interesting as it relates to uh, what your future career goals are going to be. So I'll just give you a little brief background um, of me, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of dive into today. Today's going to be half uh, syllabus and half getting organized for the semester. And then we'll start essentially our first lecture. Uh, we'll meet every Wednesday uh, from 2.20 to 4.20. Uh, I'll go through the syllabus. There's, there's a couple of unique dates that I've already planned for. Um, I record all the lectures, and there's a couple reasons I do that. Uh, number one is it's a great study tool for you guys as you go back over the lectures uh, before the exam. I write my exams from my lectures, and so that's another reason I record it is I've taught this class both semesters, um, and... Uh, I've been doing it for years, and so a lot of times professors think they said something in class, and 
they actually said it probably two years ago and haven't said it since, but in their mind, <laughs> right, in my mind, it, it was just recently. And so this way I can double check when I'm writing the exam, uh, did I actually cover that topic, okay? Um, it's not advisable to miss class. I'm not going to take attendance. You guys are um, fairly senior in your educational career. You might not all be seniors, but you've done this for a few years now. And you probably know that if you don't come to class and you don't listen to the material, um, you're probably not going to do all that well on the, on the exams. And considering that I write my exams straight from my lectures, um, it would behoove you to be here. And there's going to be subtle things that I'll hint at and talk about in lecture that really won't come through on the, on the video. So even if you are using the video as a supplemental material, I don't think it's a replacement. Okay, that's my opinion. Uh, you can talk to other students that have taken the class, but most, most of them, if you have me in 201, you're probably shaking your head to your neighbor, yeah, I would show up because he legitimately takes questions right out of his lectures. Okay? Um, I, there's no way for me to really police it. There's over 100 of you in here. Uh, this is my small, intimate classroom, though, uh, because my other lecture is about 400. Okay? So this is um, about as great as one-on-one -on -one as it gets. Um, but we're going to introduce another resource that you have available here in a minute. We do have an SI for this course. Even though it's a 300 level course, we have supplemental instruction, which is kind of unusual. Um, but the reason that we have supplemental instruction is because you, your predecessors have asked for it in years past. And the way that you asked for it was on the um, surveys at the end of the semester, the feedback about the course. And it was resonating in my mind. Yeah, believe it or not, faculty do read those things. It was resonating in my mind that you know many, many semesters of, I really wish we had some more study tools, like supplemental instructor. And I went ahead and asked. They said, well, it's a 300 level class. We don't do that. I said, well, I know, but I, I, keep, I get like 12 requests a semester. What am I supposed to do with this? I'm just telling you. Um, so they said, OK, well, uh, what's your DFW rate? I said, well, it's not that bad, because these are very motivated students. It's another reason why I love this class, is you guys are extremely prepared for this material. And you're actually engaged. You're, you're, you're here because you want to be here, as am I. And so some of the ground rules are going to be, uh, I'm going to give you two hours every week of my lecture time, and I won't be answering my phone. I won't be texting. I won't be shopping on Amazon. Okay? I, I won't be watching Netflix. So I'd ask that you not do that either. Okay, and, and it may not be distracting in your mind to you, but it might distract the person sitting next to you or behind you, and, and that's going to that's gonna be a problem. And in a class of 100 plus, we need to make sure that we have some ground rules on, on um, how to be professional in our behavior towards each other. Okay, I understand emergencies happen, um, and if you need to slip out at, at, during the lecture because you get an emergency text or emer emergency phone call, I understand that. Um, that could happen to me as well, but if you're having an emergency every week on Wednesday between 2.20 and 4.20, uh, then you probably have too complicated of a life to take this class. Okay? So as long as the emergencies are not every week, then we'll, we'll probably be fine. Right? Um, so I said a little bit of my background. Uh, I, I did my graduate work at the University of Arizona in Tucson. And uh, I went uh, directly into uh, industry. And I worked in, in industrial companies for, for a while. Um, first, I went to San Diego, and I uh, was in biotech. And I was there for a number of years. And then I came to Flagstaff and was recruited by Gore, W.L. Gore & Associates. And I worked there for about five years. Um, and, and then I left and did small startup companies again, staying in Flag, which is commuting. Uh, and then in 7, 8, 2007, 2008, I decided that I wanted to uh, teach again. And so I sort of left that career path and uh, started uh, part-time teaching at, at NAU. And it grew and grew, and, and I, I'm full-time uh, faculty now. Uh, I have an active research program uh, that exists uh, mostly off-campus right now, uh, but in the next semester, this semester and the next semester, uh, we have a new center for bioengineering that just opened. And I'm going to have a lab space there and start moving some things on campus. Okay? 
So that, that's a little bit of my background. The kind of research that we do uh, that I focus on has is, is mostly been uh, cardiovascular medicine and also wound healing. Wound healing as it relates to uh, open wounds, uh, foot ulcers, diabetic foot ulcers, non-healing chronic uh, wounds, military um, uh, battlefield wounds, etc. Okay, so that's my, my background. We do a lot of uh, regenerative medicine and tissue engineering, trying to you know, grow basically replacement body parts for those particular applications. Uh, so it's a little Frankensteinian, but uh, it's fun. Keeps it keeps you uh, busy. And um, if you're interested, in, you know, talking more about my research, there won't be much of it in this class. Um, there'll be maybe a little bit where it makes sense, but you know, it's not going to be, you know, 60% of let's talk about Dr. Keller's research, and then 40% of your curriculum. Okay. So if you want to learn about it, you're going to have to come see me in office hours. Um, I'll talk about my office hours here in. All right, so what do you need to be uh, to have to be successful in this class this semester? Well, you're going to need the textbook. Okay, the textbook is the uh, Kumar text, which is a similar text. It's sort of a pared down version of the Kumar text that's actually used in medical school pathology. Okay, so don't freak out. Did you just say this is medical school pathology? No, it's based off of that textbook, and we brought it down. I put it at a level where it's commensurate with the 300 level course. So it's a general pathology course. We're not going to have time this semester to cover every single aspect of pathology. Okay, my goal is to introduce it to you, get you intrigued enough, that maybe later on in life you decide that you want to pursue more of that type of topic. Okay? Anecdote. So this is kind of uh, cool. This week, uh, a former grad student came by the lab, up off campus lab. And um, he had just finished taking the medical boards. So that means he just finished his second year of med school. He did his master's degree with me. And he sat in this exact classroom, uh, in, in not, not over there, because we flip flop between 265 and 256. But he sat here, and he sat right about here in the third, second row. And um, he took pathology. Well, guess what field of study he wants to do now when he specializes in? He's looking at his medical rotations now. And uh, he thinks he's kind of dialed in on what he wants to do for the rest of his life. And he thinks he wants to be a pathologist, which is kind of cool. So um, makes me feel old, but it's neat when that happens. And you guys, you know, uh, come back years later. And that's kind of the best thing about teaching, is those are the kind of rewards that teachers have, is when they see the, the benefits or the products of their teaching go on and do something significant with their life. So I hope you guys do stay in touch and say, hey, you know, I just won the Nobel Peace Prize. I wonder if you want to seat at my ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'll be there. Okay? Uh, are you doing what I like to do? So um, you're going to do great things. I know it. And that's the type of students that this classroom attracts. Because at this point in your career, you wouldn't be here if you didn't think you could do it. Right? And most of you are very confident about your capabilities, and that's that's half of what you need, right? The other half, you actually need to be intelligent, and so that's what we're going to try to do, is teach you the material that you need to go be successful, okay? This is probably going to do this all, all lecture. I apologize. We'll probably have to have it looked at, uh, but the 8th or ninth edition uh, of the textbook, you can buy it, and I use two different versions because they're most of the same, and you're you should be able to get a used copy if I have two different editions that we're going to pull from, okay? And you can probably find it. Students have been successful getting it, not just at the bookstore, but also um, online, on eBay. I think some students have been able to rent it. Um, and some of you are shaking your head, so that must still be working, okay? Um, it's not super expensive because uh, there's a couple of editions. If you want to buy it brand new, it's $99.95 in the bookstore. And I know they have them in stock because I went and checked. Okay? There's another option. In the library, I put a copy of the text on reserve. And I think you can check it out. You can't leave the library or they send the cops after you. Uh, but you can stay in the library for like four hours using the textbook um, if that's going to bridge the time uh, for when you can afford to buy it. Okay? Um, so use that. Um, you're going to need BB Learn access. You're going to need uh, a computer access. 
You don't need to buy a special code. For those of you that took 201 with me and you had to purchase an extra code, um, you don't have to do that for this class because I've written all of the online material myself and it's through BB Learn. So there's no extra cost, which is nice. Okay? Uh, students find the histology DVD that's an optional purchase in the bookstore. You do not need it, but a lot of students find it helpful, so that's there as well. Um, I will be showing you histology in the lectures, and on the exams we will have histology on occasion, but they will be pulled from things that you've already seen. It won't be some random slide off of the DVD that's in like appendix, you know, why, why in the back, and uh, you just never made it that far, okay? I, I won't work that way again. I truly will test you on stuff we cover in lecture, okay? And you can challenge me on that. There's something that didn't show up, and we're going to have a recording of it, so we can go back and find out who's right, okay? And if I accidentally do do that, we'll talk about how to challenge things, then it's totally correct for you guys to bring it to my attention in a professional way. Not like, hey man, that's lame, okay? <laughs> Loser alert, question 12, right? No. Let's do it nicely, okay? We'll talk a little bit more about that. All right, so other resources. Um, colored pens, colored pencils, flashcards, okay? But you, by now you know if they work for you or not, or if it's just like making more landfill material. Okay, so don't go do flashcards if flashcards don't work for you. You need to find out what is helpful to you. I'm not saying you have to do these things. I'm just saying these are options that students have found valuable. But st some students try it and then they realize this is not working. It's actually a colossal waste of my time. Well, then stop doing it. Okay? If it's not helpful, don't do it anymore. And not every one of you is going to study exactly like your neighbor. Okay? Um, how much time do you need to be successful in this class? What's the magic number that goes in that blank? Nine? Nine hours? Six? Six to nine. Any other answers? Eight? Okay, going for the middle. <laughs> safe, that's very safe. Well, your answer to that blank is going to be dependent upon you. I, I, I like to do this because I always hear students talk about, well, there's this magic formula. If you have you know, a four-credit class, you're going to have to study this many hours, you have a five-credit. It depends on you. But you need to figure it out early. You need to get going in the class early so you can get a sense of how long it's going to take you to grasp the material. Okay? We will lecture for the full two hours every week because we only meet once a week. We'll take a little break somewhere in between uh, to, to stretch and you know, to um, get you out of your seat and get, you know, so you don't develop ulcers in your rear end. Um, we'll break up the two hours every week a little bit, but we'll go the entire time. Okay, so outside of class, you're going to need to make sure that you designate enough study time in order to be successful. I would start heavy, and then I would back it off. Like, you know what, I aced the last two exams at Keller's, so I think I'm going to study, you know, only like 11 hours this week. <laughs> okay, fine, but it's hard to ramp up and play catch up. That's kind of my whole point. All right, so how does this class work? Well, if you took 201 with me, you know kind of what my philosophy is. In this class, we started, I, I sort of flipped this classroom a long time ago before it was you know, really popular to have flipped classrooms. Um, but it, it, it caught on like wildfire. Fire. And then we started doing it with other classes. I started doing it with other classes of mine. So this one was truly hybridized or blended or flipped well before 201 was. Okay, And that's one of the reasons there was no connect platform from the publisher for online assignments. That's why I had to write them all. But the original class preparation looks something like this. You show up and the first time you hear this stuff is in here. And I'm lecturing and it's coming at you what seems to be fast. It's really not that fast if you speak the language. How many of you know uh, a second language? You speak a second language fairly fluently, conversationally. Okay. How many of you have tried to speak a second language? That would be me. And it doesn't work very well. In fact, you just kind of struggle with English, so you better, better say that. That's me. Okay. 
So, but you know those friends that have gotten better at French or Spanish or Latin or Swahili, right? That's a popular one. Okay. Um, and what happens? How do they get better at that language? They use it and they practice it and they converse. They might move to that country. My brother actually, so it must not be my genes, it must just be me. My brother speaks Spanish fluently. But he lived in Spain for a couple of years, and that's where he actually became more proficient. Okay, and then here in the Southwest, he says everyone thinks he sounds, you know, weird because he speaks Spanish with sort of a Spanish accent from Europe. But he went and immersed himself in that culture, and then when he talks, right, instead of like, you know, speaking super slow like you do with your second language, he is more conversational. So that's the same concept here. Is this is uh, a second language to many of us. And so if you don't practice and look at it before you show up, and this is your first exposure, it looks completely blank like this screen. Okay? You're going to be lost. All right? Because you're going to have all these confusing questions that don't get answered in lecture. The whole point of lecture is you show up and the light bulbs go off. I designed it so I get all the gratification of watching your faces of, oh, that makes sense. Okay? That's actually my best paycheck right there, is when I see that you guys understand what it was that you were so confused about. Because it also means that I'm doing my job. Okay? So the traditional format doesn't work so well. We've got lots of data in pedagogical research. That's teaching research of why it doesn't work very well. So the way and the strategy and why I want you to understand what we did is I, want, I need you to buy into it. If you do not buy into it and you fight it all semester, this isn't going to work. But if you agree with me, and that's why I'm showing it to you, and then you try it and you see it, it's going to work amazingly well. And I have semester after semester after semester of not just this class, but also 201, where the, the, the metrics of how students perform go up as a result of this. Okay? So, this is going to require you to do some groundwork on your own. And what that means is you're going to be confused. And that's what I want. I want you guys to have questions and come to class like, I just really didn't get that mechanistic pathway of P53 with cancer. Didn't follow it in the textbook. I read it twice. It was still like, I'm not sure what, what they're talking about. Got cancer bad. Understand there's this mechanistic pathway that's supposed to fix it, doesn't work all the time, cancer shows up, that's all I know. There's a lot of empty space in there I'm hoping Keller's going to fill in. But if you show up in that mindset, we're already ready. Because you're not like, what are we talking about today? Okay. Oh, it's pathology. <laughs> so if you at least know the topic, we're light years ahead. If you've looked at the material and you have really specific questions, we're light years ahead. Okay? If you understand like 40% of it, awesome. Because when your neighbor's sitting there dazed and confused, you can explain it to them. And the other thing is the research shows that if you can teach somebody a concept, then you actually your understanding goes up. Okay? If, if you're going to teach something, you almost have to understand it in order to instruct it. Okay? So the idea is for me not to wear green on green, but if I did, right, it would still be the second time you heard the material, right? And then we have maybe some in-class, mostly out-of-class time where you guys get into study groups, okay, and you work through the material in study sessions. This class, when I first started teaching, it was far smaller than it is now. Okay, so now it's like, you know, if we wanted to form groups of, of four, there'd be like 28 groups of four, right? That's not going to work so well. So we're going to have some class activity, but it's going to have to fit within the confines of a 100 plus classroom. Okay, so most of it's going to be outside work, but the idea is for you to perform better on the exam. That's the way this is set up, and again, I'm here to tell you that it really does work. So this semester, what should you expect? You should 
uh, expect a lot of self-study, uh, but that does not mean it's not to be confused with, oh, this is a, a, a blended class, where he's going to show up and put like two PowerPoints on, on this, discuss this, right? And then I'm going to go out and Facebook for two hours and poke my head in every now and then and say, do you guys have any questions? Right, just facilitate. No, we're going to have a regular lecture. We'll have a regular standard classic lecture. But in addition to that, you're going to have a lot of self-study. You're going to come to class, and I'm going to show you the schedule today. We spent a lot of time, almost the first full time uh, of this class, the first half, is going to be over how to be successful in this class. By the time Next week, by the time you show up, you'll have already taken a quiz online. Open book, open notes. Okay? I want you to do it alone. Can I police it? No. But I've written a number of questions, and so there's a bank of questions that the quiz will pull from. Okay? It's time, 30 minutes. It's due by noon on Wednesday, every week. So when you show up to class, you will have already taken a quiz. So that means you have to look at the material likely before the quiz. So yeah, I, got, I can look up the answers. Yeah, but you only have 30 minutes. So you know, if you can look them up fast, awesome. You want to know how to improve your chances of finding the answer more quickly? Read the chapter. Look at the lecture slides. Then take the quiz. The quiz will turn off at noon on Wednesday. So when you show up two, two hours and 20 minutes later, we're already all on, on a similar page. Does that make sense? And then you're going to have a lecture on Wednesday. And tomorrow, next week, not this week, this is a freebie week, nothing due this week, and I'll show you the solos. Tomorrow or Friday, you're going to take a post quiz. Every week it's going to look like this. And the post quiz also on BD Learn online. Open book, open notes. But you've had a pre quiz, you've read, you've looked at the lectures, you've had a two hour lecture. You might actually study with your study group on Thursdays, and then you schedule to take your post quiz on Friday, and it's not due until 11.59 p.m., okay? So every week, you're going to be doing this class, and there isn't going to be the capability to wait until the last minute and study the night before the exam. I mean, you can do it that way, but you're not going to do well in the class, okay? So, I want you guys to take a look at this quote. Give a man a fish, feed his family for a day. You teach a man to fish, you feed his family for a lifetime. I think in lots of cultures there are these types of sayings. Okay? So I want you to internalize that. Think about what it means. And then turn to your neighbor and explain to your neighbor what you think it means and have them share with you what they think it means. Okay, let's see what happens. <laughs>
to dig deeper in your learning and, and you learn more versus just taking the shortcut and just touching off the surface. So in this class, maybe that would translate, you know, if, if it's all about getting, earning an A or earning a B, um, but you don't really understand the material, um, in the long run, you're probably not going to be all that well off. I've actually had students that have taken pathology somewhere else in a different modality and uh, they earned an A in that class and then they were nursing students this is a true story and these two students came to me and they were nursing students and they said uh, we're in nursing school right now and, and we both already took path uh, but we are lost we both got A's um, and we just want to uh, audit your class I said well I, I, don't, I don't let people audit you know, that means if you're going to sit here for free, and I'm going to work really hard, and you're not going to do anything. That's not a good deal. I will work really hard, but I want you to work really hard. So that means you got to take all the exams. So you, you guys can come into the class, and I let them come into the class. Uh, and they, they audited it. I mean, they didn't have to pay for it because they'd already taken it. But you have to take every exam. And I'm going to grade them. And we're going to talk about your scores. And is, is that the deal you want? They said, sure, we'll do that deal. And they, they, they took me up on it. So they were wanting to learn how to fish. Does that make sense? But they didn't find out about that until like a semester or two later where they're in nursing school and they're like, we have this class and got an A, uh, but we didn't learn anything, clearly. And, and, they, and they took this class. Okay? So some other ideas. Anything different on this? There isn't any wrong or right answer, actually. There's multiple ways to interpret this. That's another thing that this activity is supposed to show you. Is your pathway and your strategy for this class might be very different than the person next to you. Okay? And th that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You saw the hands go up. Not everybody wants to be a physician. Not everybody wants to be a nurse. Not everybody wants to be a, a researcher or a scientist. So everyone is here for this class for a different purpose. Okay? And that's fine. You can have your own unique interpretation of what you're going to get out of this class. So let's talk about how you're going to do this class. Let's look at the syllabus. These are one of the things you're supposed to do in first day of class. I know it's super boring, but it's actually very relevant. It's going to show you exactly what, what this class is going to look like. So my contact information is here. I'm actually going to exit out of here. This is just a placeholder. Uh, update later. But we'll go to the actual document. Uh, next up, I'm going to show you the BB Learn Shell. How many of you received the email blast or the push to your device yesterday about today's lecture? Raise your hand. Okay, sweet. Um, how many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? Okay, a few. So, there's this um, system that we have at the university where I can post announcements and our SI, Iridian, can do the same thing. I'm going to introduce her in a minute. And um, usually that information is really important information. You should probably read it. Okay, it's not going to be like, had an awesome hike today. Woohoo! Right? <laughs> Great ride, you know. 
hype them out, and it was one, you know, it's going to be relevant stuff. You know, I know you don't care about all those things in my life, so I won't post any of that junk. It's going to be like, reminder, uh, your first pre-quiz is due. Reminder, next week, your first post-quiz is due. Because until you get on that schedule, you may forget, and I don't want you to forget. I really do want you to be successful. So I'll probably have training wheels on for the first week, and then I will expect you guys will fall into profile of this class, okay? The best way to reach me is going to be email that um, will show up here in a minute. There it is, okay? Um, I do have an office upstairs, and I have a phone there that um, uh, I'm assuming it works because I always get messages on it. Well, I, I don't know if I've ever picked it up in the last maybe 18 months. Because now if you leave a voicemail, it pushes to my email, and I just click on it, and I can listen to it. Okay? But voicemail is really not that efficient for me. So email is going to be the best way to get a hold of me. This email right here, it goes to my phone. And um, if, you, if you forget and you leave a voicemail, you find yourself leaving a voicemail, um, give me your email address, and I'll probably email you back versus call you. Okay. My other lecture is 400 students, and this is about 110-ish. I haven't looked at the final numbers yet, but just judging by the number of seats, I think we're closer to 110. Um, so that's like 510 students this semester, and then um, I'm helping to supervise the lab manager for the 201 labs, which is like some of the same students in lecture, but that's about 600 students. So I theoretically could have an email from each one of you, and if every student sent me an email every week, that would be 1,100 emails, okay, uh, and voicemails. So um, I don't, I'm not telling you that to not email me. I'm just saying, give me a little grace if I don't respond like in 15 minutes, okay? I'd be like, what's taking so long? Okay, um, and I'm old, so I go to bed kind of early, okay? So if it's like, you know, after 11, um, I may not email you until the next morning, okay? But old people wake up really early, so you might get an email from me at like 5 in the morning and be like, what in the world? It's so old. <laughs> right? So it happens when you get old, okay? Wake up really early, have to go potty in the middle of the night, all sorts of weird things start happening, okay? Ask your parents, they'll, 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 they'll vouch for me. All right, um, office hours. I have office hours um, yesterday. Uh, so Tuesday from 4.30 to 5.30, upstairs at 4 to 4. And then right after class today, but um, I have to end my Wednesday office hours at 5.20 because my six-year-old is in ballet and I have to pick her up at 5.30 on campus. Okay? So on Wednesday, I have to end pretty promptly. On Tuesday, I have more time. If, if, if you're hanging out and we need to spend a little bit more time on Tuesday, I don't have to stop right at, at 5.30, okay? Or you can make an appointment if this doesn't work for you. Okay, and the other thing, too, is um, we're going to have SI times that we're going to go over here in a second. And so that's another resource for you uh, to utilize. Uh, so here's more information about the text. Um, the AV lectures, you can just click on this link or copy paste it and it goes to the, my YouTube site um, and then go down to the pathology folder and that's where all of the videos will be for the semester. Okay? Um, here's the breakdown. These are optional. Here's the, the DVD is optional. Um, a, a bigger, fatter pathology textbook is optional. It'll make you look really smart if you're carrying it around, but uh, you don't absolutely have to have it. Um, and then here's the court point totals. So we've got three exams total. We've got two throughout the semester and then one final. Um, all the exams will count. We don't drop anything. We have 12 pre-quizzes and we have 12 post-quizzes, each worth 10 points. And I will drop your lowest because I do understand that sometimes you get the flu, you're at a concert out of town, you had four flat tires on your way home, uh, it, it can happen, okay? And, and, and you just never, you know, you know, you never got it done. So you do need a freebie. So there is a freebie on the, the, the pre-quiz and the post-quiz, okay? 520 points, straight scale. Those of you that have me before, 
know that I will adhere to this grading scale um, religiously. <clears throat> and the reason for it is the following. Uh, I think, and this is my opinion, but it's worked very well, and I think students have respected it for a, for a number of years now, is I think it's better for you to know what I expect of you first day of class versus um, having some wonky curve at the end that you're not certain about, right? Final's over, you go home, and your, your parents ask, so how'd you do in PATH? Don't know. I think it's going to be a massive curve. I just don't know where I'm going to end up. No, it won't be like that in this class. You will know exactly where you stand. You get out of your numbers. Okay, if you have an 89.5% and you've earned 89.5% of the points, you will receive what? An A or higher. Okay, 89.5 and up. If it's an 89.49999999 at the end of the semester, what have you earned? A B. Okay? And it'll be like that at the end of the semester, just like it is today. So you can, per, you can predict where you're going to be. So I use the word earn because I don't give out grades, I don't hand out grades. You're like, oh man, Taylor gave me a B, and I was so close. No, you earned a B, and so what I entered into the grade book was the letter grade that corresponded to the number of points that you actually earned, okay? Make sense? Any questions on that? All right. Um, we went over attendance. It is not mandatory. Strongly encouraged. Okay? I think it's going to be tough uh, for you to understand how to study for the exams and what's going to be on the exams if you don't get to understand the flavor of the class. Right? Because you guys, by now you understand. Right? You know, I'm always a little leery about a new professor because I don't know how they're going to ask questions. You know, are they going to be, you know, you know, super stinky with the A and B onlys and the all of the aboves and the yes is the answer to that, okay? Because it means that I'm testing on whether or not you really know the material, not on whether you can play the odds and pick the right multiple choice letter. So getting to know the way I'm going to ask the questions is going to come in lecture. It's going to come from your SI. So I'd like to introduce our SI. Iridian, can you stand up for me? So Iridian is a resource. Say hello. hello. Her email address is right here. This is correct, right, Iridian? Yeah. OK. Her email is right here. And um, do you want to do it at the end of class? Do you want to try to do the poll, or do you want to do it right now? Um, end of class? OK. So she's going to try to identify the best time slots to have SI. Um, and just a little thing about SI is I really encourage you to use it. So Iridian took my class. Uh, she did extremely well in this class. Um, I only select SIs, supplementary instructors from my classes that have had my classes and that have actually done well. And there's two benefits there. Not only are they super bright, okay, which is obvious. Number two is they understand how I ask questions and the way they're going to show up on the exam. So they'd be able to tell you, you know what, I wouldn't bother with that. I've never seen them ask a question. That's helpful information, guys. Okay? Um, you know what? I really focus on this because he really likes to ask these kinds of questions. Do you remember when he hinted in class about the following? Did you circle that? That's probably going to be on the exam. So she'll know those things because she's been in your seat before. And she did really well. And she understands my style. So if you've never had me before, you really want to come to class and you really want to spend time with the SI. Okay, and then that's your resource that's available to you, right? And you have your predecessors to thank for the SI because it's their comments that I kept turning in. And finally, the SI part, department was like, oh, I just give them an SI, but go away. Okay? <laughs> yes, because that's how I operate. I will just continue to ask until they give in because I know it's a benefit to you guys. Okay, so use it. Here's the other thing. I might embarrass her a little bit, but um, I think you get what you pay for a lot of times in life. Okay, so she is being paid, okay, to do this role, and you get to have access to that. So it's quality. It's very much quality. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Um, this 
course could be available for honor students if you would like to convert it to an honors class. And you just need to come see me about that. There's going to be some extra work that you have to do. Okay, um, you know, coffees every day and wash my car right <laughs> the next week. But other than that, um, the scale is about the same. Okay, um, trick questions. So. I don't intentionally try to write, and I honestly do not believe it. I've not yet met a professor that says, oh man, I tried to write this really bad question, I was successful. Everybody missed it. It was awesome. I was so happy with my job. Because okay. uh, all I want to do is see students, you know, just, oh my gosh, I just missed this question. I, I don't, faculty don't do that, really. But do we make mistakes? Yeah. And do we write crummy questions on occasion? Yes. Okay. So. Is there the possibility that you need to challenge a question? Yes. So there is a provision for that. And it's right here in the syllabus. Um, and this is going to do a couple of things. So if you challenge a question and you are correct and I'm wrong, you get the points and I learn something. And that's everybody wins. If you challenge a question and I'm right and you're wrong, then you learn why you're wrong and you don't get the points, but it's still a good scenario. Even more importantly than the point is the process. Because when you guys move on in your professional career, you're not going to get along with everybody. And you're not going to agree with every decision that's made. And there's probably going to be certain things you think, that was a really bad idea. And if you don't have practice interacting with somebody that's your su supervisor or your superior, and let them know where they made a mistake, and do it in a healthy way, you're going to have a really tough time transitioning out there in the real world. Okay, so here's an opportunity to take advantage of conflicts that we might see as it relates to an exam or a pre-quiz or a post-quiz, and you say, you know what? I'm not. I don't truly understand why I missed this question. Here's what my thinking was. Um, if you look at the textbook on page 472, or if you look at your notes on slide seven of lecture three. It seems to me that the answer should have been B. Okay? Would, 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 would I be able to talk this through with you? You can email that to me, you can come to my office hours, but I want it to be done in a respectful way. Okay? And likewise, I'm going to do it respectfully back to you. And I was like, what is, that's so stupid. What were you thinking? <laughs> Get out of my office, right? <laughs> no, I mean, we're going to have a professional dialogue, but um, I want you to practice that professionalism. Okay? If email is easier for you, fine. But amazingly enough, we are super, super brave on email. We will say things in an email or a text that we would never say to a person's face. That's the new generation that we're in right now. Okay? So if you're going to send me an email, read through it carefully. Maybe save it as a draft. Have someone proofread it. Say, is this coming across as whiny? Is this coming across as you know, arrogant? Am I coming across as you know, holier than thou, or is this professional in your opinion? And then hit send. I need to do that myself in my own career, and I probably should do it more often. Okay? And we just fire these emails, flaming arrow, and it's like your screen's like on fire. Right? You're like 12 flaming arrow messages from upset students, right? I should need some play. So I want to encourage an environment where you guys challenge what you think are unfair or questions that are incorrect. But I want you to practice how to do that. And some of you, I actually recognize a few of you from previous semesters who have done that and have been successful at it. Okay? So it's a really good process to go through, and I think it's going to serve you well as you move on in your career. Okay? And sometimes you guys teach me things. You'll read something that I haven't read yet. Because you have 110 sets of eyes, and I only have two, or one set. And you guys are able, I have two sets of eyes, because I have four kids, so you have to have eyes in the back of your head. Um, you guys will find stuff, you'll point out literature to me that I will incorporate into the class, and now the class is better. Okay, so it's all good in all ways. All right, so you can see how this plays out. Let's look at this. Uh, it says subject to change. The, the reality is, Unless there's some major thing going on, emergency, or we have epic amounts of snow um, that I'm off playing in, 
then we probably won't be canceling class. Okay? So I will be here. There's a couple of slots here. You can see I'm going to be away at a conference um, on this day, on this Wednesday. It's I will have the lecture posted online. Okay? So that day you will not meet in person, but the same assignments will happen. And that's the reason that it's highlighted in yellow, so that you can actually see that. This one's highlighted in yellow because this week you actually have two quizzes due that week. And so I highlighted it in yellow because it's a little out of sequence. Usually it's one pre-quiz, one post-quiz. That week it's two pre-quizzes and two post-quizzes just because of the volume of material. Okay? And I'll try to remind you of that, myself or Iridian will, but I don't, I went ahead and highlighted it because it's notable. Um, and then this one. This one is extremely strategic because do you know what November 25th is? What's that? The day before Thanksgiving. That's the day before Thanksgiving. Okay? So we're going to do an online lecture that day as well which gives you some flexibility in your travel schedule because sometimes if you can leave a little bit early, you can actually save quite a bit of money on that ticket, okay? So having these resources gives us the tools to be able to leverage these times where, yeah, we can sit here until 4.20 the evening before Thanksgiving, um, or you guys can get home and be with family, okay? And you still have the assignment due Wednesday by noon, don't forget it, okay? You still have the post quiz due on Black Friday, so after you're done shopping, get online and do your quiz, okay? But um, we're gonna go ahead and do a online lecture on the 25th, okay? And those online lectures, they'll be lectures from the spring that have been already recorded, okay? And, and the only thing that'll be a little different is, you know, we might be talking about spring break instead of Thanksgiving because of when the lecture happened. But other than that, everything will be all the same stupid jokes, okay? And, and I'll probably have green on green, just like I always do, okay? All right, so deal? So I've already kind of put a lot of thought into how this class is going to play out. The final is preset by the university. The final is uh, 12.30 to 2.30 on Tuesday, December 16th. It's actually very late this semester, okay? Yes? Oh yeah, you know what? Sorry, they moved it. It was on the it was on um, the Tuesday, and they moved it. And I updated the date, and I didn't update the uh, day of the week, so I got to fix that. Thank you. Okay, so I'll fix that and I'll repost it. Um, so it is on the sixteenth, and uh, that should be a Wednesday. Is that correct? Yeah. Let's just double check that since we're writing things down. I want to make sure. I'm not updating my Facebook status, I'm just looking at my calendar. December 16th is a Wednesday, okay? Yeah, so they had it um, on December 15th, and then they moved it right before the semester started. Okay? So I'll fix that, and I'll repost it. Here's where we talk about the pre-quizzes. They're due by noon on Wednesday of the week of lectures, so your first one's due next Wednesday. And then the post quiz is due by 11.59 p.m. on Friday of each week. You can go into it early if you like. All of the quizzes are open right now. So here's the other thing that's a value for this class. If you know you're going to be at a science conference, like I'm going to be away, and you know what that date is, and there's no way you can be here, you can get an institutional excuse, right? And, th and that's fine. But you also have the ability not to miss any of the assignments. You could work ahead. You could go watch the lecture ahead of time, look at the lecture notes. Um, you could take the pre-quiz and the post-quiz before you leave on your trip. Okay, so they're all open right now. And I'm going to show you where you find this information here in a second. Um, there's a bunch of small print that we're not going to spend a lot of energy on. Um, but what I do want to focus on is academic dishonesty. So by this point in your career, um, you guys are all considered professional students, okay? And the reason for that is there is no rule that you have to be here. There is no federal law, state law, local law that says you have to be sitting where you're sitting. Okay, when you're in grade school and 
uh, elementary ed and post-secondary education, there, there are requirements of, of what we're supposed to provide. But you're all here because you choose to be here. And so I consider you in a professional realm, and I expect certain professional behavior out of you. Uh, and I know that you expect that out of me. And so these things like plagiarism, passing somebody's off, off, somebody else's work off as your own, or cheating on an exam, these are things that we won't tolerate. And, uh, and the department and the university takes them extremely seriously. But even more important than that, I want you guys to ask yourself, if you're going to be a physician, um, what kind of doctor are you going to be? If you're going to be a nurse or a PA, how are you going to behave? And your true character, right, the saying is, your true character is how you behave when nobody's watching. So, my hope is that we're training and pushing students out into the real world that are going to be wonderful reflections of yourself and of this institution. So you need to practice it now. Practice how you want to behave in the future when you're a doc or a nurse or a PA. And do that in this classroom, okay? Any questions on the syllabus? So the way to read this is these dates that are shown here uh, are, are the actual dates we get together, like Wednesday the 2nd. Okay, so you can see on Wednesday the 2nd, we actually have our introduction to pathology, and then we're going to uh, possibly start a little bit of cell injury in depth in the second half. And then there's no assignments due this week. I just want to get you guys calibrated to how it's going to work. And the next week, you've got three quiz, quiz one and post quiz one, so on and so forth. Okay? The exam dates are already scheduled, and they're already on your calendar. Okay, Veterans Day, we don't meet, okay, because that's a holiday, the university is closed. Okay, any questions about that? This Veterans Day, um, having a Wednesday, is one of the reasons that we have to double up on the week of the 21st. Okay, just, so some of you might be wondering, why do we have two quizzes? Well, because we kind of lose a little bit of time based upon the Veterans Day holiday. Okay, a lot of times... It only happens every X number of years that it falls on the day that we have lecture, okay, in this class. So that's how we're accounting for it. Okay, let's go to um, BB Learn. Let's first say hi to Rob Thomas, okay, everybody? <laughs> All right, great. How are you doing, Rob? Uh, so this is uh, the BB Learn shell. <clears throat> and here is the announcement. If you didn't see it, push to your device. Here is the announcement down here that I sent out yesterday. First lecture tomorrow, it's today, file 256 at 2.20 p.m. And if you click on the more announcements, you'll see that there are still some relic announcements from previous semesters that I just didn't want to delete because they were still good information. Maybe. Thinking. There they are. So, like for example, if you go under here is um, the page number conversions between the eighth and the ninth edition. So, <clears throat> the syllabus publishes the page numbers for your readings in the eighth edition. If you bought the ninth edition, you just need, you're going to need to take a look at this chart and go, okay, well, chapter one is still chapter one, right? Um, chapter two is still chapter two, but the pages for the 8th edition and the 9th edition are just slightly off. Do you see that? Because the assigned reading, I'm only having you read in the text what is relevant to what we're going to cover. Make sense? Uh, okay, so if you go back to home page, and you can go to course content right here. You guys see this course content? And here is everything that you're going to need this semester, I'm going to turn off the edit mode so it looks like what you're going to see. The syllabus is in this folder, so I'll update the final exam day of the week, and then I'll repost it there. This folder is probably the most important one. This is the weekly tasks. This is where you're going to find all the lectures. And if you go to week one, you click in there, and you can see here's the lecture slides that we're walking through 
on the PowerPoint. And then cell injury and death, which is our first lecture that we'll be covering next week, but we might get into some of it today. Uh, this is also posted in this file folder. And you can see there's nothing else. It's just two lectures. If you go to week two, cell injury and death, now you can see that you've got a lecture and this is where you take your pre-quizzes and your post-quiz. Make sense? So they're in the respective folders. You just click on it. And this one says it's due 99 by noon. It tells you there's a time limit of 30 minutes. It'll uh, save and submit automatically when the time is up. Uh, it's due uh, September 9th by uh, 12 p.m. noon. And you won't be able to start it if it's past that due date. And so you see that, you hit begin, and it's going to pop up the quiz and start the clock. Make sense? Same thing for the post quiz next week. And if you go back to the folder, just to prove it to you, if you go down to week 15, which is the cardiovascular section, those quizzes are already open and ready to go right now. Okay, so the lectures are already there. All the quizzes are already loaded. You already know the schedule. There shouldn't be any surprises. You with me? Any questions on how to access the material? Okay. Any questions about the syllabus? So the lecture videos are in these weeks as well? No, the lecture videos are going to be on YouTube. Oh, okay. So if you go to, uh, let's see, what's the best way to get there? Click the first. Pardon? You can click the first box. Oh, it's already there. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it is already there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it looks different. It looks different on, on my screen. So if you just hyperlink on the syllabus, it'll take you here to my YouTube site, and then you'll see that here in pathology, you can click on pathology. So what I already have is I already have the lectures from the spring semester loaded that we're going to use online this semester. Make sense? So for example, renal and uh, liver, these are the lectures the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So they're already there. Okay. And then the tissue repair one and two, that's the lecture of when I'm going to be at my conference, which is also on the syllabus. So it's just the ones that are unavailable in class? It's just the ones that are unavailable. And then probably by the weekend, I'll post today's lecture. Okay. So the idea is before the exam, you'll have all the lectures there that you could rewatch if you wanted to. Now, why would you do that? Well, what if your notes are kind of a little sketchy in the spot? Okay, you can go back to that segment. You didn't really follow what I was talking about. Maybe you didn't truly do all the pre-work. You kind of just showed up to class. It felt like I was going really fast. If it feels like I'm going really fast, it's probably because you didn't do the pre-work. So if that's you one week, you don't have to raise your hand and you know go sit in the corner with the shame hat on. <laughs> you can just rewatch the lecture and go over that section again. And okay? do a little self-study to get caught up. Okay? Make sense? So that's the YouTube site. So it's hyperlinked from the syllabus. That's, a, that's why I wanted to do it that way. Other questions? All right, let's take um, a little break, like a five minute break. Stretch, use the restroom, get something to eat.